We're recording. All right. So um, what we're going to do today, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to start off with the file menu to show you uh, how you can set up your personal preferences. Uh, and then I'm going to show you the help menu as well. Um, and then we're going to, today we're going to jump into order entry. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to enter orders in the system. Uh, and then tomorrow, Wednesday, depending on what sched scheduled session you're coming into, uh, that's when we'll actually dispatch the carriers and the trucks on the load. But today we're just going to go how to, over how to enter loads in the system. Um, but first, I'm going to show you how to enter your personal preferences. And if you want to follow, follow along, if you got it up, you can certainly follow along with me. If you hit File, Personal Preferences. We'll wait for Frank to end up. What are we going to do? Operating? No, you can go over there, but you're going to go down to the cloud on the left. There you go. Password in this section of my And now, if you continue to make fun of me, <laughs> I just make fun of you. This is what we're going to wait for Frank to catch up. I was being nice. Oh, that's nice. Wow. Okay. I could have clarified that. Slow folk here. I have an error logging in already. Yes. The error log was written to the file. You got an error logging in. Mm hmm. This is exactly what happened when I was doing so this. Log in if we have our own stuff or no? Yeah. Use your own. Okay. Use your own. I'm used to having oh. that. Oh. That's funny. You got a lot of good Okay. Yeah. 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 Opens it up. Yep. Now you're on that screen. You're going to use the desktop file. Fine. 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 It's the same as yours. Yeah. Right where yeah. the other one is. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. It's the same as yours. Okay. Go back. You had to enter some words here from weeks ago, so then I got to the end of them with the same thing. Okay, everybody caught, caught up? So far. All right, so file, personal preferences. Mm -hmm. Oh, personal preferences. Okay. Um, and you'll see your username pop up when you log in. You log in as Al here. Um, anywhere, time in the cloud. Uh, you have to click update. If we want to update a record, you got to turn the lights on the system. So if you hit update the top left, uh, that's going to give us the ability to update this record. Um, here at the top, uh, all this is internal information. Uh, if you don't put anything else, we want you to put your email address in here because you'll be able to send links to loads and uh, things of that nature through the, through the system. And I'll show you how to do that. But you want to make sure you at least, at minimum, you have your email address up here at the top. I see we could put our cell phone in here. Down here on this bottom section, these are specified to your user. So if you didn't like a particular date format or time format, um, you can change that to how you want to see it as your user. Um, if I have mine in military time and uh, Al likes to see his in civilian, one, if I enter something in military time and Al logs in, he would see the time in civilian and converts to your user. Uh, same way with that date format. The toolbar setting here, uh, captions and icons. Uh, I recommend leaving on captions and icons because I like to see the picture with the text. But if you just want to see captions only or icons only, you can certainly change that for your user as well. The view menu as, um, recommend toolbar here. And Al, if you'll open up, uh, the, open up the menu at the top, uh, you can see that it gives you this nice little list um, and with everything that comes out on the side. The other option there is tree. I've only had one customer, and it's been recent, that uses the tree option. What the tree option is the old pluses and minus and expanding, uh, expanding and uh, contracting the pluses and minuses. So um, toolbar is the common setting right here. What was that setting again? How do you affect it? Um, let's see here. You need to be on the system tab right here. Yep. And hit up. Oh, you're in user entry. Uh, exit out here for me. Oh, and go to file. Personal preferences. And then hit up. She went to system admin and Eric? users. And now we can just click this. Okay. 
system and enter will actually execute or try to save the record. Um, so we rec I recommend having this check for a little while until you get used to hitting the tab key because you'll be entering information and quick accidentally hit enter and what this will do is pop up a box and say are you sure you want to save this record. Um, once you get used to maneuvering the system then you can take this off but for uh, starters I would definitely leave it so you don't not enter information and accidentally executing it. Um, save screen size and some permissions. What, uh, th what this will do for you is Loadmaster will remember um, where you had your screen last and how big you had your screen. So as long as you have that checked, the next time you open that screen, maybe you open your order planning board on your uh, on the right side of your screen and order entry on the left. Next time you open it up, it would remember where you had saved it. So select text when entering a field. Um, what all that will do for you is now, if you're just having to click on phone number up there, or username, or something that has a text field, all it does is highlight it in blue for you so you can start typing over it versus having to backspace everything out. Um, display toolbars in two rows when needed. So, in screens such as order entry, if you want to jump into order entry for me real quick, Al, you'll see a big list of command buttons. What this would do, as long as you have that checked, is up here at the top, it drops down a second row and shows you shows you those buttons. If you didn't have that checked, um, they would that second row would be gone and it would all be housed in this drop down menu here. So you'd have a list here and just one column, or I'm sorry, one row of buttons. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, our last checkbox here, maintain listing sort order updates. So this if you're in your planning board and you're sorted a certain way, uh, maybe you're sorted by date, um, and I'm enter, I enter another load in that's going to fall on your planning board, it would fall into your sort for you versus you have to constantly resort that uh, specific uh, grid search. Over here on your grid settings, we've added the ability um, to, uh, if you want to just clear that one background real quick now for me. Uh, and clear that one. So if you don't have a background color set here, it's going to show up in all white. But we had the ability to um, on your distinguish different colors on your odd and even rows. So if you hit choose background here. You want to pick a lighter color because the text is going to be black. So if you go with a darker color, um, you're not going to be able to see your text in your fields. Um, I per I personally like to have. Uh, one, a solid color, and then the white. Uh, that helps me. That helps me with my contrast better. But uh, you can certainly whatever whatever helps your eyes and whatever contrast. Uh, you can certainly select the even rows too. So if you wanted to do uh, hot pink and neon green, you if that's what what your contrast sees better, uh, you can certainly have it like that. But I personally like one color and then one white uh, to help me. Just like that. Just like that. So you would be here. That that would be no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. No. Well, no, that would be. Okay. Um, once you've updated your settings here, you can hit execute at the top. Execute saves records in our system. You can see we have that add update confirmation. Um, and so it's going to ask us if we're sure we want to update. Uh, we can hit yes, and we can update our user file. What did you do to do that? Uh, press hit, enter? You can either hit enter on your keyboard or hit execute. Yeah. Hit execute. There you go. All right. Al, if you want to exit this screen for me. 
Next, we're going to go up to back up to the file menu, and we're going to look at Instant Messenger. So Instant Messenger will show you anybody that logs into the system. Um, there's three three different uh, message buttons up here. The initial one is the first thing you do is select who you want to send a message to. You can send it to one user or a group of users. So uh, if you wanted to send it to a group, you can hold down your control key and select multiple multiple people that you wanted to send this to. The message button at the top, if you click message and just enter any message text you, uh, you want, hit OK. There we are. Somebody sent us one as well. It pop it pops oh. up it pops up Sorry. well you know good that's a I mean good so everybody can see it it just pops up as a little window message <laughs> yeah this won't be abused at all <laughs> so there's a chat button as well um, and that's going to be like a Google Chats where you can just chat back and forth with the user um, keep in mind that uh, if you send some important information that needs to be stored. We, you can't if you close it. You can't pull a history up. You can't pull a history of it. But that's so no history is of our chats, evidently. Right. Oh, okay. I'll just delete that. I'm deleting yours <laughs> too. So um, if uh, one person will send Al a um, force chat for me, I want to show you what force chat can do. Uh, explain why it's good, why it's bad, and why it can be taken away from you as well. So uh, who? I so, think Kim's on it. <laughs> so we got a four shot. So Al, try to click, try to click on anything on Loadmaster. We're trying to close that message for me. So what that's going to do is lock. Oh, it heck lock, no. It locks down. It locks down Loadmaster. So this can be a powerful tool. And it, powerful tool. <laughs> it can be a powerful tool if um, you know somebody sitting on the desk on their phone or something like that, and you need a quick response from them. I was at a brokerage in Indianapolis, though, and uh, it was about uh, it was a big brokerage, about 40 to 45 users in the cloud, and it was actually one of the owners of the company thought it'd be hilarious to force chat everybody at one time, and this is at the time of their go live, so he force chat he force chats all 40 users thinking it's funny, um, and what it did was create a continuous loop, so every time somebody responded, it force chatted everybody again, and he actually shut down the production for about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. Um, so we took. Wow. So he quick. He quickly got that button taken away from him. So it can be taken away if uh, if it gets overused and abused. I can't imagine you would have issues with that. <laughs> Do not use force chat. <laughs> oh, that's your mind. All right, Alice, do you want to exit the screen for me? And then you would answer that, and it would force chat the chat, force chat off? No, but, uh, yeah, once you, once you answered it, it, so when Al answered that, it freed him up, it freed him up to use Loadmaster again, certainly. So you could type whatever you want back to the force chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, next, uh, in the file menu, I want to show you the video viewer. Hey, Al, I got back out, and I have that error message again. Do you what? what that? Video viewer or report? Uh, video viewer. I exit out of where we were at and then that pops up. This is an egg break. It's not a runner. I've never seen egg breaks. Oh, you got to see this one. See this one. Okay. Oh, this is working. If I can not care. All right. Our videos. So, um, uh, follow me new video uh, viewer, and we'll just expand out since we're doing order entry today. Uh, this is that plus and minuses. If you want your whole menu to always look like this, you can as well. It'll look just like this video viewer. But Al expanded out to order entry. And so say we wanted a quick refresher on the toolbar, uh, total, totals toolbar command usage. If you, Al double clicks that, it's going to launch in his web browser. Uh, did we try, did we try the volume? Getting a summary information about the query set in a screen. 
It's a powerful tool can it's sometimes be hidden on screens screen toolbar. You're working with on that. If the screen's so width does not wall. show all the toolbar. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a voiceover, so you can uh, follow along with the video. It's just short three to five minute tutorials that you can follow along with. Where did you get that at? That this listing is in file. Yeah. Okay. Under video. Video viewer. Yeah. And then we just uh, went to the dispatch menu. Oh, you, oh, you go under dispatch. When you click dispatch, it seems. Okay. And then and then so if you're working in a certain screen, though, um, go ahead and close this and open a order entry for me. Have somebody show me how to do that. This thing with the service order. Go up to customer service. Then it's the service order entry. So if you're working if you're working in order entry down here at the bottom right in any screen you'll see this little blue film strip. If you click that little blue film strip, it will give you a list of videos associated with that particular screen. Um, so a little bit easier way, a little bit easier way. So anywhere you see that blue film strip means that there's videos that are pertaining to the screen, um, and you can come in you can come in here and get to the video straight from there as well. This is a helpful tool in case you're confused when you're. Learning, right? Yeah, first line. It's just quick, quick little tutorial videos. In addition to that, the help menu over to the far right. If you go to help manuals, and let's just go into dispatch volume one. You definitely don't want to print these. Um, it's 695 pages, unless you just want 695 pages of uh, information sitting on your desk. But these are um, interact interactive documents and text searchable documents. Uh, what I mean by interactive is if Al clicks on anything over here to the right or to the left, so order entry, general tab, it'll take you directly to those pages and you can either print those pages or just read them from here. It's also text searchable, so if, uh, in your find box at the top, or if you don't have it, if you hit control F, it'll bring up your find. And you can type in a word or a string of text. Um, and it, it can, you can text search the document as well. And as L enters through, yeah, it just finds the word that's on the next page. Mm -hmm. You can keep this. Right. It's exit this screen. One other thing in the help menu I'm going to show you is under help manuals, system administration. And then quick reference handout. This is a list of different shortcuts and time saving keystrokes that we have in the system. We're going to go through some as we go through training. For instance, uh, if you put today's date in the system, you can use T for today or put T1 and that will bring you to tomorrow's day. And I'll show you as we enter orders today how that works. But this is just a list of those different, uh, different time saving keystrokes. Al's going to exit this for me. So we're going to go over order entry today. And to get into order entry, the long way is to go to the menu. And you would go to dispatch, customer service, and then order entry. Um, for any of these buttons that we're going to have, uh, if you're going to be at order entry or planning a lot, you can create shortcut buttons. So if you go to dispatch, customer service, and then click and hold your mouse on order entry, and then drag it out to the right. You can create shortcut buttons for anything you use frequently. So if you go to dispatch, customer service, and then order entry. When you're hovering over order entry, click and hold, click and hold on it, and then just drag it out to the right anywhere, anywhere in your gray area. And click and hold. Click it. So when you come in here, instead of going over here, going to there, you just click on that. So with that command button, you can see that it came up with that blue ball cabinet that says order entry up there. If you right click on that button and go to change button properties, this is where you can change the caption of that button. Um, if you wanted to say, if maybe you just wanted to say orders instead of order entry. <coughs> Um, the tooltip is when you hover over it, that's just what the little pop-up box would show you. Um, you can change the caption positions. You can also add an action with this button. So if I knew every time I clicked this particular button, I was going to be adding an order or searching for orders, I can enter an add mode or enter in search mode. 
or if I run a search in order entry, I can save that search down and associate it with that button as well. Um, open the open to load master uh, when load master starts here. What that's going to do for you, I know every morning I, I I'm going into order entry when I open McLeod. As soon as I open McLeod, it would kick it would kick order entry up on your screen as well, so you didn't have to click the button. And then we have a lot of little standardized pictures. You can associate a picture with that command button as well. Any question before we jump in and actually start adding the loads? Any questions? Any loads? Questions so far? So we'll actually add we'll actually add an order now. If you created your command button, you can click your command button. And you see Al Al has his enter in search mode. I can tell that it's in search mode, it automatically opens. If you're in search mode, you'll see blue, you'll see blue tags and let you know uh, you're in search mode. Um, it'll also it'll also tell you at the bottom finding records, that means you're in search mode. Uh, yeah. Al, if you look more at the top left here. Now I'm just going to exit that and do it the normal way and you can see the difference. So if you don't, if you're not, um, if you're not in any kind of mode with that button, you'll get a screen that looks like this. To add an order to the system, uh, you have to turn the, what, uh, quote unquote, turn the lights on the system so you can update fields. So you click add at the top and you can see there's fields that in red that, or that turn red. Uh, fields that turn red are required codes in the cloud. Um, so uh, anything in red is required. You'll see the order number is red. Uh, that's not a freeform field. Once we get all our information in and save the record, then our order number then our order number will uh, generate for us. All right. Um, so uh, we'll start out by uh, up the top selecting our revenue code, selecting our revenue code. Um, anywhere where you saw Al, just click uh, the magnifying glass, the baby rattle, um, different people call it different things. But if you click that, that means there's a master file behind, there's a master file behind uh, that. So we've already built some information in there, so you can just select it. Um, we'll do that on locations. We'll do that for, uh, for revenue codes. Um, commodities will be built in for you, so you can just select it from there. So let's go ahead and select your revenue code. Um, one thing I did forget to mention before we went in here, um, some people like to mouse click. I don't. I like using hotkeys. So if you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, you'll see certain things, certain letters up here for these buttons underlined. Um, so if uh, you never, you essentially don't really have to touch your mouse. You know, Alt A to add or Alt U to update, uh, things of that nature as well. Um, so we got our revenue code in here. Um, our first step is to choose a shipper. So you can choose a shipper code. Um, if first look at the master file and see if there's any, see if we already have it in there as a location. Um, in the cloud, you have two different uh, entities when you're entering uh, orders. You have locations, which are going to be all your pickup points and all your drop points, and then we have a separate entity customers and your customers are who we're actually going to invoice the freight to. So this is where we're actually putting in our, uh, where we're initially picking up this load. So not who's paying for it at shipper. this point, just where we're picking it. Correct. Correct. I'll, just do, I'll just choose a farm market. Here. So you can see by Al choosing um, Barnhart uh, and the way these codes are generated the system for you, we use the first four of the name, the first two letters of the city, and then the state abbreviation. And so if you know that code, you can certainly type, you can certainly type B-A-R-N-O-W-K-Y, and it would, uh, and you wouldn't even have to go into that magnifying glass. But you can see based on the, um, based on that uh, location file that we built, uh, it brings in the address and the information and the information for you. Um, two ways, two ways to add a location if it's not in there. Um, if uh, the hard, the long way is if you right click on the location in the location box itself. 
So right click where it says B A R N O W K Y. And you can jump into location entry as long as you have permission. And that will take you to location entry. And you can add a new location from here if you, if you needed to. Um, a couple of things I do want to point out about this location field file. Um, this is informational, except for the appointment required here. If you have a if you know every time you pick up from that location, we're going to have to schedule an appointment for it. We can mark that box. It'll mark it on the order entry screen for you. And what that does is drive it to a um, appointment scheduler board. So if if one thing you do during the day is go in and you're calling on multiple appointments, you can go to this board and you can call and confirm appointments straight from one screen from a board versus having to flip load to load to load to load to confirm those appointments. Um, the context information you'll see down here as well. I do want to point out the directions tab here. On the directions tab, if uh, at this particular location, you always have the same loading instructions. Driver needs to use uh, the second dock or something like that. I can tag that to a particular location and have that automatic have that automatically um, print uh, or send to the driver or print on the rate gun. Am I right click on mine? I'm not seeing it. I'm only seeing call this location, audit log, or copy content. You may be permissioned out right now. Uh, we may have to look into getting the permissions for that. Okay. So, so, it may yes. Just, it may just be a permissions that's used. Julie and Lori. Well, Lori you, doesn't have her hand. Oh, can you right click on Bernhardt? I did. Let me see what you get. Right click. Frank. Yeah, I'm not sure which. Are you going to go over a temporary customer? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We will in a, we will in a second. So that you all need the access to location. Yes. Um, one of the other tabs, real quick, that I want to uh, point out here is this trailer pool tab here. Trailer pool. Right in the middle. Um, so if you have any places where you drop trailers, you can create a trailer pool. Um, you can you know, just check the trailer pool box, put your pin in the max you like to keep up there. Um, when you run your trailer pool for it, it'll tell you if you're under or if you're over. But it'll also tell you um, what trailers are there, what trailers are there, how long and how long those trailers have been idle as well, uh, sitting in a particular location. Um, and there's a there's a standardized report you can run too that will uh, um, report on those as well. All right, now it's going to exit for me and go back in. Oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. The PN and City State Zip for my people that are going to be posting the load boards. Um, this is a key tool for you guys because um, the way I explain this, I'm from Chelsea, Alabama. Not a lot of people know where Chelsea is, so I wouldn't want to post a load board that had a load picking up uh, picking up in Chelsea. I want it's right outside of Birmingham. I don't want to post it in Birmingham, but I need my correct address in here. So I put Birmingham, Alabama in that PN and City State Zip when I posted it. It would actually post in Birmingham instead of Chelsea. If you exit here for me, no. So we entered our we entered our shipper information. You can see the scheduled arrival uh, between is a required field. Um, what this wants in the date and time of when this load is supposed to pick up. If it's an appointment time, you only have, you only have to fill in the stop line. But if you do have a window, you can fill in both. So um, if you click into the scheduled arrival between, this is where I, um, this is where you can certainly use your uh, day shortcuts. Um, you can use the calendar if you want to. I don't recommend it because if you use the calendar, it's going to bring in the current time as well. So no matter what day you select. But say this load's picking up today, uh, I can use T for today, and then space of time. So today it's 1700, and hit tab. So it says some nose, it was the 14. So if you go back in there, Al. More than one year in the future. So make, make sure you put a space in between your T and your. You got 2022. Yeah. Yeah, we're a little out. So if you do, uh, if it was picking up tomorrow or two days from now, you can do T1 or T2, space and time. 
to tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Maybe go back in there one more time, Alan, for me. So let's say this was picking up the people. All right. That's what we did. So if you have a window of days that it can pick up. So what you would what you would do there is you would use if you can pick up the fifteenth and twentieth, you would use the second time as a window time. Today plus one. It's like when I've been entering mine, like example, like Batesville, I'd put on the top line today, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Second line today, two o'clock, which should tell Julie that that truck needs to be there between seven o'clock and three o'clock. Yep. And then you would have put the space. Okay. Uh, one more thing, uh, if this load was picking up on the 21st, but you didn't want to count how many days that was, this isn't smart enough to know what uh, month or what year we're in. So if you do a 21 space to time, space to time, hit them, and we'll put the 21st in there for you as well. Um, where you want to be careful, so if you were going to September 2nd, the, it knows the current month, the current month um, so you would actually enter the month in there as well. So um, if it was picking up September 2nd, you would do 0902, and uh, it would do the same thing, but you would have to specify so the you would you're going to do. Put a space, then the, the date. What did you say that? Say that again? So if you're going to put the 21st in? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the 21st, you could just put a 21, 21 space to pick up time, okay. and it brought in the 21st for us. So you don't have to put the T thing, just put mm -hmm. yeah, no, the date use, of the month. You can use the date. But just uh, in the current month. Mm -hmm. If we're going into September, so Al, could just click in there again for me. So if I was going into September, I could do 0902 space of time. And it's still time saving, but I would have if I'm going outside the current month we're in, we gotta specify the month before the day as well. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I had the question if we had a certain days or maybe um, it was a first come, first serve uh, here. Um, the schedule arrival, I could do the 15th and 8 o'clock. This second time is window time. So between 8 o'clock and maybe um, 5 o'clock. So what this is telling me, when, what it, uh, this is telling me here is um, that truck has to be, be in this sometime between 8 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Uh, your comment and reference button here. This is where you can add any of your any comments or uh, any of your pickup numbers to a particular stop. Um, I'm going to go over the different types of comments. So if you up in the top tier, if you add and drop down my comment types, this is where you can add comments to a particular load. You have four different options: your dispatch uh, comment, your hot comment. Um, are the ones that you can send to your drop you can send to your driver. Uh, you can print them on rate cons and things of that nature. The difference between those two, the hot comment's gonna turn the sit in the stop tab red in the system anytime you order it. So it just flags attention for anybody that's using Loadmaster. But they both uh, have the same functionality that's able to print on rate cons or send to your driver's uh, pedigree unit or something of that nature. Dispatching hot, print Dispatch. on, on rate con. Mm -hmm. Your other comments are what it is. It's just for internal use. Um, so uh, if you just needed to make a comment about that stuff that you only wanted to see internally, you can do it as an other comment. And then the billing comment here is the one you want to be careful with because the billing comment prints on the freight bill. Um, if you have access to this, you want to be careful. Our in-house trainer, Sean, he used to do what I did. He had a customer that uh, was hauling a load for Kellogg's, freight shifted. Um, yeah, it got damaged and the constantine didn't accept the freight. Well, the dispatcher didn't want too happy about it, thought the billing comment just went to the billing team. So the billing wrote this nasty comment about the constantine, thought it was just going to the billing team. The billing team didn't catch it, printed on the freight bill. Kellogg saw it at the bottom of the invoice when they got their invoice and uh, suspend, or, uh, put them on probation and almost uh, they almost lost their contract. So if you have access to the billing comment, definitely be careful what you say in there. Now, if you'll add a high comment for me here, so we'll execute this load and just whatever you want to say in there, um, so we can see the stop tab turn red as well. <laughs> Hit okay. Okay. So we got our um, we got our comment up here, and then any reference numbers you need to add to a stop. If you hit add down here at the bottom left, the reference numbers in the second tier. 
and this is where you can add um, your pickup numbers or any reference numbers that you would have for a particular loan. So I'll add a pickup number for me here. Um, you can see right here that you have the ability to send to the driver with a load assignment as well, and that will that'll send to um, if you're if you're sending that out to your driver's people net or not people net pedigree unit, um, it will show that pickup number to them on his actual unit as well. Reference number, weight in pieces. Is this where we're entering the weight of the load? And the this, is for pieces? The, this is for a particular stop. I'll show you in just a second how to enter um, the pieces and the weight for the load as a whole in just a few minutes. So strictly just for entering a pickup number. Mm -hmm. reference. Yep. So if you wanted to add a weight in pieces, it's in, then I know it's going to be, I'm going to pick up 20,000 pounds at this particular stop. But the actual weight calculation is going to come in at here in a second for the entire load. Right. So if you hit OK here for me, Al, and close this. So we've added our we've added our shipper information. Now we need to add our content e information. This can't on this side. It can be freeform type, but I want to show you Google Places and what we can do with that. So if this was going to a job site or hypothetically just for training purposes. Say we don't have McLeod as a location of the system, but I quickly want to bring McLeod. I, I want to see how we chip in this load in McLeod. So if you hit the little red bubble, um, it's going to bring up your Google Places search, and Al can type in McLeod software, and it goes up. It's going to go up to Google, and it's going to run. It's going to run and pull the interest, uh, pull the interest, the address of McLeod software. Al can click on that, hit OK at the bottom, and. Uh, just like just like that, uh, using Google Places, uh, we now have easily found the cloud software. Then uh, you do that with Google Places. Then same thing over here. Um, you put your scheduled arrival times uh, when you're going to deliver. Uh, any comments or references that you have about that particular stop, um, you can add there as well. And delivery. I'm going to come, we're going to come back in a second. I'm going to show you the rest of the minimal information we need to enter a load. Then I'll come back and go over some of these features. So if you'll come up with me and go to the rating tab. This is where we actually rate the load. This is where we're going to select who we're going to bill this customer for, who we're billing the customer. Um, so over here in red, you have to select the billing method, prepaid, uh, and you guys may you decide to use uh, just one of those, but prepaid typically means that the customer is associated with the shipper. Um, collect, the customer is associated with the continuity. And then you have a third, your third party or your check on the check your cash on delivery, however you want to look at it. So let's select for those out. And then right under that is where you choose who we're going to build for this load. So you hit our magnifying glass and let's choose our bill to who we're going to invoice this load to. Who should we go with to? Anybody got anybody? Say Robinson? Sure. Pretty good. Nah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, this billing distance right here is actually a button. If you click that button, it's going to run PC Miler for you for the system and pull in the, pull in the miles for that particular load. Um, where it says 324, you see it's highlighted. If you if you have a con if you're contracting with them or have different miles that you usually build them for, you can certainly over there override that here as well. Here um, is where you're asking about the uh, the cases and pieces and the weight of the load the load itself. Um, this is where you would in this is where you would enter that as a load as a whole. Um, so one uh, one piece at 35,000 pounds. Um, Tabbing through uh, your rate method, you got five different rate methods that you can rate on. I think you guys mostly do flat or distance, but you can also rate on hundred weight, um, other or tons. 
and it hit tab again. So this rate method in the rate right here is for your line haul rate. So we got a flat rate at two thousand dollars, which brings into my freight, which brings into my freight charges as well. And then if I had any accessorials like fuel, uh, tarping, anything like that, I would add those at the bottom, in the bottom left hand corner down here by hitting add and choose a code. Uh, we only have a few in here right now, but this is a percentage fuel surcharge. And so whatever percent, uh, so we were 16 percent and uh, outlined it there. Now right here, you always want to leave this bill too blank unless you're going to bill another customer, unless you're billing a separate customer for that load, or the customer has to have a separate, uh, or a separate bill just for accessorials. What this bill to right here does, it just creates a split bill um, and splits the freight charges from the accessorials. So if if you don't uh, all it will do, it, it puts it on one invoice, it has the freight charge and the accessorials listed under it. But if they need a separate bill, that's the only time you would uh, switch that bill to right there. What if we want to change the amount that comes up to uh, uh, a whole dollar amount? So um, right now we just have the percentage fuel surcharge in there. Uh, we're gonna, we still have some work to do on building those codes, but we'll have a fuel surcharge flat. Um, and that would even bring up, you know, it'll let you type in the amount. Okay. And there'll also be, I think, a fuel surcharge distance one that you could put in how many cents per mile and then uh, it would times it by the number of units. Um, we, lot, we just don't yeah, have that. A lot of times we have rounded off. Yeah. Where we round them off and it's 198 right. bucks, we put 200 bucks in there. Right. So, yeah, you would have a fuel, sur fuel surcharge, for just a different code that you would choose, fuel surcharge flat or something like that. Okay. And you, you would select that code, just type the number in there. All right, once out, it's okay here. Um, you, uh, it adds down here, and you have your other charges at $320, and then it gives you your grand total here as well. So that is the that's the minimal information in our load. If you hit once you get all that in there, if you hit execute at the top and for sure we want to save this record. Then it's going to create it's going to create an order and create my order number for me. So any what any questions so far on on? Getting in, that error. Yeah, I'm getting that error yeah, all the time. Yeah, the field schedule. The field is uh, entered to post this record. Okay, so let's go back to the general tab there. General tab. Mm -hmm. Which one? Uh, your delivery. Mm -hmm. So right there. Oh, here. Uh, go one more to general, yeah. and so you don't have a schedule. You don't have a schedule time for your delivery. Oh, is that what I'm getting? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if the if it's good example, if it's a required. I was field, listening and not putting stuff in. So I'm <laughs> if it's a required field in the cloud, the cloud won't even let you continue. I see. I see. Get that information okay. in there. Okay. So then, once you get that information in there, you go to execute. That's what I mean, we can go back to. What do we integrate with the tab that was in the training tab? What are you looking for? Uh, once you put your delivery date, go okay. back to this rating. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you execute So she, you executed it, so it gave you, it gave you a load number. Oh. oh, so if you go back and you fill what it's missing, it's it just automatically does it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so if you want to edit it, right. right. Okay. Right. If you want to edit it, you don't have to hit add and then execute the schedule to make it nice for yourself. Okay. Okay. Any any other questions so far on um, inter that's the base information you got through. Next, we're going to go over some of the other fields that you can use. But um, any questions? All right. So. Um, if you want to write down your load number, because I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, uh, just in case you can get back to it. But if you forget, I'm going to show you how to get back to uh, certain things and use our search, search features in the cloud. The order number is a load number. Do yep. you need all those zeros? Um, you don't have to have. You don't have to have them. Um, I'm going to show you short. I'm going to show you a shortcut to how to get to it without it. So, Al, if you hit search for me at the top. So I know my order. I know my order was 148. Um, if I don't want to type the leading zeros, it's always going to be a seven-digit load number. But if I don't want to type the uh, leading zeros, 
I can use the asterisk. The asterisk in our system is a wild card. Do you want us to get all the way out of it so that we can go back and find the number? Uh, if, still you, have our orders up. if you hit search, it'll clear it out. It'll clear it out. Okay. So if Al does asterisk 148, what that's telling the system to look for any string of text that's before that 148. Um, so once he did that, it executed it, and then it brings me right back to my loading number. And so what did he put in front of that again? Uh, the asterisk. The asterisk, okay. Um, any field in the cloud could be searched like that. The more field information that you enter, the narrower search you're going to get. Um, let's do a search again in Al. And uh, let's say I remember it shipped from Barnhart, but I don't remember anything else about it. I can, uh, it, it's over, I, I want to do the asterisk to hit cancel here. Oh, sorry. So in the actual text field here, um, Al can just type barn in and hit the and asterisk after it, and that will search for anything after any text after barn. So he's like Barnhart. I can see that we've shipped through shipped from many things that start with barn. Down here at the bottom right, I have uh, 23 records in my list. So I can go I can go through. Listen to you. So down here, at the, down here at the bottom right hand corner, I can see I have 23 records in my list. Um, I can go through those one by one by hitting the next button. You can go through them one by one. Or over here, uh, I can hit my list button. And that will bring up a list. But you want to minimize it a little bit also. I can show them how it will, how it uh, interacts with, so, as Al clicks or scrolls down to this list over here, it'll interactively update order entry for you as order entry as well. So you can look at this list and go through this. You definitely go through this list um, of 23 records that I have to find what order I need them. But once once again, is is many uh, as many records as you have, um, then you can just come back and update the order entry screen. Um, I forgot to tell the last class this too. If you come back to your list for me, Al, one more time. Um, if you right click anywhere in the grid, you can also, any list that you have in the system, you can also export it to Excel as well and bring it into Excel. All right, Al, let's bring back up our order 148. And hit up. So if I want to update the record, uh, make any changes to this particular record, I'd hit update at the top. And that's going to take me into updating, update mode so I can update any of these fields if I need to. <coughs> so coming down here to the bottom, the planning comment uh, field right here is just a free form message field. You can use this from your planning board as well. And up, it's the only field you can update from your planning board. But you can type, you can type, quickly type something in. And it'll save on the planning board. So maybe we have a hot load and I'm leaving for lunch. Um, and and uh, you guys are still working behind it. You can quickly see that message on the planning board and update it from the planning board versus having to come back and load it every time. This is nothing that goes on in the load itself. Right. It's, this is strictly internal, strictly inter internal for uh, operation. So. For operation. Okay. Okay. Or anybody that's using the planning board. but. Mainly, your dispatchers are going to, anybody that's working yeah. with you and looking at your board will be able to see any comments yeah, yeah. and put it in very quickly. Yeah, yeah, I don't see much of a say. No, other than you have to watch to see if they're covering anything. Okay. And given from a total perspective, uh, if you wanted something to show up front, because I've recommended to Al that everybody have this planning comment front and center mm -hmm. on their planning board when you enter the load in. You can enter that there, and you would see it as soon as you open your load board up too. So, um, the commodity here's where you can select the commodity. Um, so you can select it out of the master file, or um, or update it here as well.
Now, that's one of the things that was not talked about last uh, in the last yeah. session. If we wanted to put in like a temporary commodity, mm -hmm. would we just leave this blank? Yeah, leave it blank and just update. Uh, type something in there and hit down. Um, and also going to change where it says temperature range here. Uh, that you have the ability instead of having temperature range to put your length, width, and height in, a, in, in those fields. Right. We won't have that by the end of the week. Um, the operations user here. Um, two ways of the asset side. You can sort this by on your planning board. Uh, so you put in the operations user, the responsible party for that load. And from the broker side of things, you would want your operations user in there because that's where it pulls the, whatever the operations user is, when that load posts the load board, that's the information it's going to post with. The agent right here um, is the agent on the load. This agent field here, and that's where the agent's efficiency is calculated on a particular load to load basis. So when your agents are entering their loads, uh, you just enter the agent for that load, and there that when we calculate the commission, that's what it's going to calculate off of is the or who it's going to calculate the commission to is the agent that's in that particular field. Hmm. Yes, I know. Brian. Now with the, <laughs> with the agents, if it's not a huh? So in other words, I'm not considered an agent. Is that what you're saying? I said, are you not set up? You're not a real call company. Well, I'm not on there either. Well, evidently. And I broke the freight. Jackson, on there either. No, that would be if I was that's entering a load, right? I'd entering. have to Absolutely. input my name in there, right? Cool. All right, we'll get that fixed. Okay. 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 John, I was I, 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 right now, I'm back I, I, my number is looking better down. already. Neither is Zach. <laughs> yeah, I changed my number. I completely locked up. I control the way I shut that down. Mm -hmm. Then when I go oh. back inside, they're gone. Yeah. 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 Next to the <laughs> yeah. drop, drop uh, I think so. Nope. Last time I was out, when I was out here about a month or however long it's been, that piece had an issue. Um, it's like, what am I going to in the middle of the session? Thank you. So. Uh, Still unconnected. I'm going to connect you, Mom. I'm not, though. It, it, it says a jam, but I don't mind. Because I'm still yellow. Mm -hmm. Flag down here. Yeah, it's, a, it's that wireless connection. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> you told me to hear out. What's in there? The hardware that has the back of my mind, you told me down here. Who's that? I don't know where it is. It's on <laughs> yeah, I'm burning it up over here. Sure, I can control myself. You can keep on going. Or, um, so moving along this bottom section here, your BOL, uh, this would run on the invoice as well. So you can enter your BOL number here, a uh, constant reference number that can be, be a customer reference number, however you guys decide you want to use that. Um, also prints on the invoice too. Um, if you know the specific trailer, you have a trailer in a pool, uh, the binoculars will take you to the trailer pool. But you have this specific trailer you want to put on this, you know this can go with this load, you can put it on here and order entry. You don't have to here though, because um, you can put it on at dis you can put it on the load at dispatch. 
or um, when your pedigree units go live, your driver will actually fill out a form and uh, actually fill out what trailer he grabbed as well. Did it ask for us to do the tra to do the trailer and order entry when we first put it in? No. no. I didn't see that, so we have to go back to it. Because in, you, because in our department, we always do. We tell them mm -hmm. if we want to step back for a double draft. So you don't you don't have to you don't have to go back in. I just showed the first thing I did was just show you the middle okay. information. You you could have we could have came down here at the beginning and entered all this information. I thought we well. we've been practicing these out of the sales department. And I thought we've been yeah you you can in. you can certainly do it yeah. at the initial order entry. I just did the minimum required fields then came back to talk yeah. about it. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so I was like the magnifying glass for the trailer type. This is where you select the trailer type that uh, is for that particular load. Um, this field, when you post it to a load board, uh, it pulls from, this is where it pulls from to post that particular trailer type to your load boards as well. Um, tractor types are defined by uh, us, but you put the tractor type in if you wanted to. And you could also um, put the order by, which is reform field, who did we talk to that placed the order for this particular one. Moving left and right, we have the general continue tab here. Um, if it's a round trip load, what that round trip checkbox will do is if it's a true round trip, maybe uh, Burns Harbor to Birmingham back to Burns Harbor. But we on the invoice, we wanted to show uh, to the customer that it was Burn Harbor to Birmingham. All that check flag in the oh, checkbox is move the last stop uh, on that order to uh, to be your company instead of showing Burns Harbor to Burns Harbor. Um, the, dimen the dimensions over here is just for auto just for auto rating purposes on this side. So you can, um, if if you build the dimensions in and you use our auto rating tables, um, it will give you a if the surcharge. It's just for auto rating the surcharge for particular dimensions. Um, subject order we're going to go over tomorrow, and this brokerage qualification profile we'll go over tomorrow as well. You can see we made that hot comment earlier, so my stop tab's red. On this particular stop tab, this is where you can uh, add. This is where you can add stops, any stops to the load. To add stops to the load, you select the um, select the delivery point or where you want to add the stop before, and then hit insert at the bottom. And so if you have a couple different stop types here, you have your pick up your delivery, split and drop, pick up, split and drop. And what you'll actually do that for the movements, which we'll talk about tomorrow too. But that's if you're dropping, if maybe tractor A is dropping into the yard and tractor B is going to take it over the road. That's how you create a separate movement. But we'll actually do that from the movement screen tomorrow. Um, the other ones I want to talk about, um, if you scroll back up, is your via points too. So your via points, uh, like for heavy oil or something, you may have to, uh, PC Miler just gives you point A to point B, but you may have to reroute, you may have to reroute them um, because they're, because of permit reasons or whatever. So you can add a via point in the system here. What the via point authorized is, means the we've authorized it for the customer, so we're going to pay the customer for the miles, and we're going to pay the driver, or bill the, not pay the customer, bill the customer for the miles, and pay the driver for those miles. A normal via point would mean that um, maybe it's just routing that we had to do. So we're still going to pay our driver for those miles, but we're not going to bill the customer. And then a via point unauthorized is driver went out, driver just went out of route. We have to calculate the miles still for IFTA, but we're not billing the customer. We're not paying him because it, it was on his decision to go out of route. Uh, if you'll add in the top, it's just a pickup, an extra pickup, an extra delivery for me, though. Sorry. Do you want me to add a pickup? Pickup or delivery, yeah. Okay. Hillary okay. stopped. So we'll, we're going to add an extra pickup here. You can either do it by location or use your Google Places.
and I'm not sure. Let's uh do a Bridgestone Arena. That's kind of a little way. And then so we're gonna have we're gonna have an extra pickup at Bridgestone Arena Arena in Nashville. So we we'll hit there, hit OK at the bottom. And then it does require you to put in a scheduled time as well, or you have to schedule the stop out. <coughs> Pleasure. Thanks. And if we hit OK at the bottom, then it inserts our then it inserts our second pickup, the second pickup in here. Um, if these if the stops did move around, I can't switch the pickup with the delivery, but I can switch this pickup, so I know it doesn't make sense. But if I wanted to move the Nashville pickup before the Kentucky pickup, I get it up there, and I can move these stops around from here as well, too. Right. Next, moving along my tabs here, I'm going to go to the Equipment Required tab. And there's any equipment required for this particular load. Um, uh, maybe load blocks, straps, tarps, something like that. I can add it to this particular load by hitting add at the bottom. Yeah, right now the only thing that's in there is choice car. Mm -hmm. But um, you would see a different list here, and you can add those to load the load here as well. So if the load needed straps as opposed to chains, we could put that mm -hmm. comment, and it would show on the uh, load rate of uh, loaded. What am I talking? Break, break on. Break on. Can we put them in manually or not? You know, like only well, I was pink straps it. only or something like that. Or I, I don't want to create any right now. I was just looking in there, just thinking maybe if we had another one, there'd be something to enter when we go through this, but not right about right now. Okay. And then finally, on the rating tab, back to the rating tab, a couple things I want to talk to you about here. We don't have them set up yet, but if you have auto rating tables with particular customers, you can set. We can set up the auto rating tables, and instead of having to come and you have those rates built, you can click the auto rate button, and once those tables get set up, it would go out and search um, your criteria and bring in the rate that your contractor rates uh, built in our auto rating tables. We also have a estimate fuel surcharge button. We don't have these set to the customer too, but if your customers have particular uh, fuel surcharge tables that they use, um, we can associate that to the customer. So uh, I bet you CH does have one, but CA, well, the CH Robinson may have a specific fuel surcharge that they use. And what the system does is once you attach that to a customer, it'll go out. Our system downloads the fuel prices for the DOE every, uh, every week. So go look at what fuel is at, Compare it to the price that's in CH Robinson's table, and it'll automatically put that surcharge in there for you as well. For fuel. Um, any so any questions so far? Any questions so far? A right. few more things. A few more things, and I will show you some of these command buttons across the top. And then after I show you the command buttons, I'll give you time to. I know most of y'all enter a load with me, but if you want to practice, practice a little bit, certainly do that. So execute here for me, Al. So we've looked at so we've looked at search, uh, add, update list. Um, we'll deep dive into the movements tomorrow, but you can click that movements button, and that'll take you to the movements of the load. Remember, movements are what we pay our drivers and pay our carriers off of. Orders are what we're billing the customers. And we'll deep dive into this tomorrow. If you'll click back on the order for me. Um, right next to movements, um, you have your deliver receipt button. Uh, and just hit OK through this. Um, it's just standard right now. We haven't made any changes to it. Um, so this is what our standard delivery receipt is. Uh, you guys can, we can manipulate this so you guys can um, really manipulate it how you want it. So if you wanted, if you needed to send this to a customer, or maybe you wanted to take the load rating and information out and actually give a physical sheet to a driver, or uh, change the text to say bill of lading and uh, take some of the stuff off and add a signature line. Um, there's some different ideas of what you can do, what you can do with this delivery receipt. 
Let me exit here. Um, the duplicate button at the top, uh, if the customer called or if you wanted to duplicate this load, you could create extra copies of this load. Uh, in our order copy options, we have certain stuff set that it won't um, that won't copy over, such as like pickup numbers and maybe additional chargers or something like that. I can't remember what exactly is in there, but certain stuff won't copy over. You can uh, copy up to 25 loads at a time. Now, let's just do three. Let's do three. So Al selects three and hits copy. And it's going to return those three new, three new order, no, three new order numbers right there. And then Al can hit return new. And it's going to return my three records here. And then I can go, I can go through and hit update, update my times, my pickup numbers, anything else I'd have to update for these new, these new loads. The, uh, you can create a no S and D uh, if you have to over short or damage on this load. You can create an OS and D from uh, straight from the from the order. Create the OS and D, and then the um, uh, safety department can get a rapid alert, let you know that you put an OS and D in, and then they can take it from there if uh, that's what they handle and handle if it has to go to a claim or anything like that. You should find a power source. I should very, very soon. A lot of these command buttons, I'm not going to go over all these command buttons today because uh, most of them are dispatching tools, so we'll go over when we dispatch as well. But the reference number button at the top that you see. Um, all this is a quick reference number search. So, customer calls in, doesn't know your load number, but has a pickup number or maybe their customer reference number. Um, you can type in the reference number they give you, hit OK. And then, what did you found? What about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Hit OK. Um, and then, so it found one with a reference number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So quick reference number search if the customer doesn't know your load numbers or anything like that. Stop search if it's, um, maybe the customer calls in that have any type of reference numbers or anything like that. Just knows that it's stopped in a particular city, picked up or dropped in a particular city. Uh, you can enter that information in and see, and it will bring up uh, any records that stopped in that particular city. All right. Um, we'll go over all that. Coming down to the bottom row of buttons, uh, the mileage button over to the right. What that mileage button does is, based on the stops that we have to load, it takes that it takes the point A, it gives you point A to point uh, point C here in this case, um, and just shows you uh, off of Google Maps. If you exit here for me, though, Al. It'll also show you, so we had two stops in Elkhart, so it shows me my shortest and my practical miles. Um, one thing I do want to show you here, if you'll delete both the Elkharts. So one of the questions we had is, um, from Iron Mountain Infant Driver sitting in Marquette, Michigan, we, we could run the miles and see how much how much you would have to dead end. So two things you can do up here, you can uh, do city, common state up here, <coughs> and hit tab. And select it, it'll bring up a list and then hit add for me. And then you can cal calculate that again. Or if you know the zip code, you can just type the zip code up there and hit tab and it brings the city and the state associated with it. All right, so let's exit out of here. And let's add one more city to this, Al. And just for the purposes of uh, it didn't have to be closed, you can do, uh, you know. You could do Chelsea, Alabama. Do Chelsea. <laughs> three five zero. That's good. So let's do let's do that. So I can show you how the zip code works. Just do a three five zero four three. Hit tab, and then add. So and let's uh just for what that's good too. <laughs> wow, that is that's a long way. So that gives us that gives us the best route. But say um. And for this purpose, we know we know that would be the route we take. But exit out of here for me real quick, Al. Um, switch the Chelsea and the Marquette. So if you're 
So if four, just put these stops in, and now hit calculate, it's it's gonna if I hit calculate, it's gonna run, and we obviously know that's not the best route to I mean go from Alabama to and then all the way back up to Michigan. But if you exit out of here, if you exit out of here and you hit optimize, it takes your starting point, but then it then it's gonna optimize and then it optimizes the rest of the stops for it, rest of the stops for you. So this would be good if you have a lot of picks or a lot of drops. Uh, right around the location and you don't really know and you want uh, based on PC model to see what the most optimal route is, you can do that from here as well. All right. All right, if you want to exit out of here. Um, a few more things. Um, and the I want to show you the total the totals button. So let's say I want to see um, Let's bring up a bigger search. So let's uh, search for something for me out and turn, return more than one result. Maybe Shipper Barnhart or something like that, or revenue, or revenue code would be perfect, actually. So anything uh, that is less than truck. And execute. Take the top to run the search. Uh, you got to execute first to run the search. All right, so we have five records in here. So um, let's go to our, I like to show up the rating tab first, so let's go to the rating tab. And now um, we'll use our totals button, which is hidden up here on our little drop down by the exit. Is there a way just to show those five records, like one, two, three, and you can pick which one you went to, so, instead of going through each one? Certainly, you can hit list. Okay. And that'll give you a listing, your okay. listing of them. All right. Um, if you hit the little drop down by the exit button up here, and click totals for me. So say I wanted to see the brake charges on the, or the mileage on the, these LTLs. So click on the 1104. And what that does is based on the five records we have searched up, it gives me a total miles we ran. Quick snap, it's basically a quick snapshot. Give me the total miles we ran, the average, the maximum, and the minimum. Um, you can do that for uh, charges filled. You can do that for see who's been who's entered loads in the system, and it just gives you a quick snapshot. The at email button at the top is why I wanted you to put your email address in on your user. If you hit that, you can select what users you want to send this to, and what it's going to do is I can send a link to the current record, which would only be the record we're visibly on the screen. Or a link to the whole search, which would send the link to all five records. But you can send that to a user. What it's going to do is pop up your Outlook. And so maybe um, you need me to look at uh, these particular five loads and check something on them. It'll pop up your Outlook with a hyperlink. So when I send it to you, you can just click that hyperlink, and it will take you direct. It will take you directly into my search without you having to rerun that search. So what happens when you open it up? Um, so if he if he was to send that if he was to send this um, and click here to open order entry, when you click that when you click that link and you got it, it would bring up because he, he was sending the link to the whole search. He would send the, the link to the five records and said, you have to bring it back up. As long as you have Loadmaster on your computer, it would open up order entry for you with a with a direct link to that search. All right, finally, um, I, last thing I want to show you is the audit log at the top. So I'll click that audit log. People in the cloud call this the tattletale as well. So if you scroll down all the way to the bottom here, Al, yep. so uh, right here should be the initial record entry. If you cl click there, actually, I think there's some more. Scroll down a little bit. Okay, initial record entry. And then each time somebody comes in and changes, uh, Something in in so click on the second record now right above it now. So on seven five two thousand seventeen at four thirty nine, Nikki N uh, switched load board from no to load board. So it timestamps the user with a timestamp and what they changed on every time a record uh, updated after it's entered. So I don't want to get the call saying Al, nobody's made any changes. Nobody's done anything. Okay, so if I went in, so you're saying, so if I went into Nikki's load and I changed something in it, we mm -hmm. can go into the record and I can see that. Mm -hmm. Can you change the pickup time from this to this? 
Any, yeah. any, any, anything, you, anything you change. So if you do jump in, if you jump in real quick and uh, to order number forty-eight, mm -hmm. and just uh, it's a deliberate, but we should mm -hmm. still have permissions. Just update, update that. Okay. Update okay. something on that logo. Okay, so star forty-eight. Um, okay. I'm going to update it. I hope that will let you because it's already been delivered. But it's, I think oh, it's I say it just, oh, yep, yep, yep. And I'm going to just press it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And execute. It's not letting me. Ch oh, it's over here. Never mind. I figured it out. That may be. Yeah, it's the same scheduled early arrival. It must not be after scheduled late arrival. So the 21st is my arrival, and I'm trying to change it to the 28th. Well, it may be because it's in the week. It's already been delivered. Okay. The tractor, so. Hit a board at the top for me. Butter, butter. Yeah, really. And let's update again. <laughs> And let's instead of trying to change the time, uh, uh, we're going to change the time here. And let's really change the revenue cost to LTL to uh, truckload. Uh, oh, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's not the favorite cookie one I have. So mm -hmm. let's make it um, yeah. underwhelmed. Can you see it in the park? You can. Just a paper. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right, Al, let's uh, exit out. Yeah, you can exit out. Okay. Too. Al, run the outlaw for me. And then at and the, and the top, and it immediately goes in the back right here. So, Kim, it shows that you updated it on the 814 from LTL to legal. So, anybody that makes that change, anybody makes a change, you can see who made the change to the particular one. You can run, but you can't hide it anymore. And it's no matter what the change is. Mm -hmm. Whatever, if any field that's updated. Beautiful. Love it. So. Maybe I won't feel like I'm losing my money We'll start. We'll be able to find out who those ghosts in the system really are. <laughs> All right. Anybody got any? Uh, you close this. Uh, that's about it for order entry. Anybody got any questions, uh, comments, concerns, compliments? They're awesome, man. <laughs> um, I'm excited, but there seems like a lot. It, so, so it, it does. I promise you, it does seem like it's a ton of stuff. A ton of stuff to start out with. But I promise you, it's really user friendly. When I started the cloud, it was taking me two to three minutes to enter a load. And within a couple of days, when I got used to what fields I had to put in, I can enter a load now in about 30 or 35 seconds. Uh, and that's with with other customers' data. Like, come to you guys, I can enter a load that fast without knowing any codes or anything. So once you start learning codes and everything else, um, never have to touch a mouse and enter a load very quickly. So I was reading that on the uh, PDF for the. Uh, Hotkeys and stuff like mm -hmm. that. There's like a lot. It mm -hmm. makes things like pretty, pretty, pretty nice. So I, I hardly ever touch the mouse when I enter loads. Now I, I use my hot, I use my hotkeys and uh, just tap through the entire screens because I know. And uh, you'll, I mean, you'll even get to know. I hit tab five times to get to this field that I need. How so. do you know? How do you know the hotkeys? Um. So if you hold down Alt, I tried that. Um. Now if you'll, let's see. If you hold down your Alt key. Uh, hit hit execute so, so we can see more as well. Uh, you can see it from there, but uh, or abort. Maybe. 